Hey, what's up you guys? Guinea Piggies Designs here and today I am going to be doing a foam tunnel tutorial. So real quick, for those of you who are new, my name is Brittany. I basically sew things for your small animals and do other random stuff. For those of you coming back, welcome back to my channel. Here is a tunnel I designed myself through trial and error basically and I thought I would share this tutorial with you guys. Today I am going to be using my new Genoa me M7 Continental. It's been working really well for me so far. This tutorial I did use cotton for the outside but you can definitely use fleece but I did use fleece for the inside if that makes sense. Everything I use in this video is going to be linked down below in the description. Anyways if you guys want to see how I made this foam tunnel then just keep on watching. Alright so for the first step of the tutorial we are going to cut out our foam, our fleece, and our U-Haul. So the first thing I'd like to do though is to cut out the foam. Now really quick I am using 0.5 inch foam so what I'm going to do first is cut out a 20 by 24 inch piece of foam. Now my foam already measures 24 inches long. I don't really have to measure that out just to make that easier so I'm going to go ahead and measure out 20 inches by using my rotary ruler here. I'm also going to be using my 60 millimeter rotary cutter. So let's go ahead and cut out the 24 by 20 inch piece of foam. <laughs> This piece here is going to be the top of our tunnel. The next piece I'm going to be cutting out is going to be for the bottom of our tunnel and this piece is going to measure 8 inches wide by 24 inches long. So I'm going to set this aside. For the next step, what I like to do is to cut out our actual fabric. So for this tutorial, I am going to be using this cute bicycle print cotton. So for the fleece, for the inside of the, I'm going to be using this cute floral rose anti-pill fleece. The cotton print is going to be for the outside of my tunnel and then floral print is going to be for the inside of my tunnel. It's also going to be for the two removable pads. So I'm going to go and cut out the cotton print first. To make this part easier for you guys, what I like to do is I like to use my foam pieces here to trace out the actual cotton fabric I have here. Alright, so I'm going to lay my foam long ways on top of the cotton print. Now for this it doesn't matter which way your cotton print is facing. That, and then what I like to do is cut three inches away from the edge of the foam. In the end you should be cutting out a 27 by 23 piece of your fabric here. <laughs> and cut that piece out. As you can see, it's three inches bigger than the actual foam piece. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the bottom doing the same method. So for the bottom piece, you're gonna be cutting out a 11 by 27 inch piece. So let's go ahead and do that. So I went ahead and cut out the two pieces. So I'm gonna keep this because I'm gonna use this to trace out my other pieces. And I'm gonna set the foam aside. So now I am going to be cutting out my fleece. What I like to do first is cut out the top piece and the bottom piece. So let's go ahead and do that. So when I cut out this piece, I'm just using my top piece that I cut out from the cotton to trace out the piece I'm gonna cut out for the fleece. But again, if this piece does measure 23 by 26, seven inches. I'm going to cut out that side. I'm going to repeat the same process but for the bottom of the tunnel here. So again this piece here is going to measure 11 by 27 inches. I'm going to go ahead and cut out one piece of that. The next pieces I'm going to cut are going to be for the removable pads. Now I am making both sides of my pads out of this floral print. Now if you are using another fleece instead of cotton, you can cut out two pieces of the other fleece and then two pieces of your inside fleece. So I'm going to cut out four of these pieces instead of two if that makes sense. And then so far our pads, they are going to measure 21 inches by 9 inches. So I'm going to cut out four of those. What I like to do for that is first I like to measure out the size and what I like to do is measure out the first one and then use the one I cut out to trace out the remaining three. So I'm going to do that real quick. Got 
my first piece. So I'm gonna cut out three more of these. So I went ahead and cut out the fleece for the pads. So the last thing you're gonna need to cut out is U-Haul. I have some U-Haul right here. This is what it looks like. Basically U-Haul is just like a furniture pad. So what I like to do is line my pads with two layers of U-Haul. So since I am making two pads, I am going to be cutting out four pieces of the pad size. I'm gonna cut out four of those and I'm gonna use my piece here as a guide just to make it easier. These are all the pieces you are going to need to sew your foam tunnel. So just a quick recap, you should have four pieces of U-Haul for your pads. And then for your fleece, you should have four pieces of your bottom fleece for your pads that measure the same. You're also going to need a 27 by 23 inch piece of your fleece. And you're going to need a 11 by 27 of an each piece for the inside of your tunnel of fleece. So those are all the fleece pieces. Now for the cotton pieces or the outside pieces, you're going to need one 27 by 11 inch piece of, of your outside fabric and then a 27 by 23 inch piece of your outside fabric. For the foam, again, you're going to need a 24 by 8 inch piece of foam and a 27 by 23 inch piece of foam for the top of your tunnel. So the next step we're going to do is go ahead and set everything up for sewing. All right, so to prepare our items for sewing, what I like to do is set up the potty pads first. So what I'm going to do is lay down one piece of my U-Haul. I'm going to lay down one piece of my fleece, which again, this one is going to measure 24 by 8 inches for the next pieces we're using. And for this, you do want to make sure the good side of the fleece is facing you. So as you can see, this is the bad side, which is not as vibrant, but this side is the good side. So you want to make sure the good side is facing you. And then we're going to set down our next piece of fleece. This time you do want to make sure the bad side is facing you. So this is my good side of the fleece. This is the bad side. And then I'm going to lay down a piece of my U-Haul. Next step is optional. You can add clips around it like this. So that way when you sew all your layers will stay together. So for the second pad, we are going to do the same process. Next, I'm going to work on the bottom of the tunnel. So what I'm going to do first is lay down my fleece with the good side facing me. And then I'm going to lay down my cotton print here with the bad side facing me. So this is the good side and then the bad side is facing me right here. I'm gonna lay those two pieces down and then I'm gonna set my bottom piece on top of it. So here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a pin and I'm going to trace around it. So when you trace around it, what you wanna do is for the sides, you wanna go an inch away from the side. So you wanna make sure you leave uh, some room for your foam. For the edges of the top and bottom, I'm going to try to get kind of close foam like this. And again, on the edge here, I am going to go an inch out. I have traced out the foam onto my cotton here. If you guys want also, you guys can clip around it with your clips. And then for our top piece, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to lay down our fleece making sure that the good side of it is facing you. And then we're gonna lay down our cotton, making sure that the bad side is facing you. I'm gonna put the foam on top and I'm going to trace around it. For the top of the side, you're gonna try to draw as close as you can to the edge. Add an inch to this side. And then for this top side here, I'm gonna try to draw a line as close to the edge as I can. And then for this bottom side here, I'm going to draw a inch away from this side. For the next 
part of this tutorial, we are going to start sewing. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to my sewing machine and I'll let you guys know what we are going to do next. So for the sewing part, what I like to do first is work on our potty pads here. So we already have them laid out for sewing. All right, so I have my potty pad right here. So what I like to do is to leave a hole. I do leave a one inch inseam from the edge here. So what I like to do is I like to start right here and then I'll sew all the way down and then I'll turn, I'll sew this way, then I'll turn and then I'll sew up, then I'll turn and I'll sew that way and then I'll turn and then I'll stop about there. So I'm not gonna sew all the way around it, I'm going to leave a hole so that way we could turn it inside out. So I'll go ahead and show you how I do that. The kind of stitch I use to sew around everything is a regular straight stitch, which is I do give myself 2.5 spacing with the stitches, I do a bigger stitch because I do go through a lot of layers. So if you do a bigger stitch, it's gonna be easier to sew through thicker layers. And I do have my needle centered. So just doing a straight stitch. When I sew, what I like to do is an inch is where this black thing is right here. So I'm just following the edge. I'm not looking at the needle here. I like to start out in the middle of the pad. As you can see, I'm not starting all the way at the edge. I'm kind of starting down towards the middle. So what I'm gonna do is start off with the back and forth stitch. Anytime you start you want to go back and forth I'm just gonna sew straight down all right I'm stopping here and I'm turning For this side, I'm not gonna sew all the way down. Again, I'm gonna leave a hole. All right, and then I'm gonna stop here. So I started stitching right here. So I'm gonna stop right there so I have a hole. So what I'm gonna do is a back and forth stitch. All right, so I didn't really cut out my fabric straight, which is why the edges aren't perfect. But if you cut out your fabric straight, your edges will be the same length all the way across. I just wanted to make sure I went through every layer. As you can see, like this layer here is further away from that one. So I kind of had to sew right there. So I went through all the layers. This is how your pad should look once you sew around it. Now I do have two pads. So what I'm going to do is speed through the next one. I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to set this one aside. So let's do that. So I went ahead and sewed around both of the pads here as you can see and then I did leave holes on both of them. The next step for the pads what I'm going to do is trim around the edges of both of them. So I'm going to be using my Ginger Spring Action scissors. For this what I like to do is just try to get as close to the edge as you can but you do not want to cut the seam here so I'm going to cut all the way around it. So this is how it looks when I cut all the way around it. So now I'm going to repeat this same step, but to the second pad. So I went ahead and cut around both pads. And the next step what I'm going to do is to turn them right side out. So to do that, what I'm going to do is find where I left my hole on my pad, which was right here. Grab a piece of U-Haul, grab a piece of fleece on one side, and then grab a piece of U-Haul, grab a piece of fleece on the other side. And then that's where you wanna reach in and pull it right side out. So what I like to do is just to grab the furthest edge, which is probably somewhere over here. And then I just pull that right side out. So when you turn it right side out, it's gonna look like this. And then, so what you wanna do is reach your hand in. If your hole is too small and you can't fit your hand in it, what you could do is you don't have to put your whole hand in it. You can use your thumb and you just feel for the corners and then you can just push them out like that. So you see my hand, only my thumb is in it. So I don't have to put my whole hand in the pad to straighten it out. This is how it looks when I turned it right side out and when I straightened it out. So now I'm gonna repeat that same step, but to the second pad. So now I have both pads turned right side out. So now what I like to do is close up these holes. Now I do hand sew up these holes. You can use your machine. If you do want to use your machine, you, all you do is you fold the edges in like this 
and then you're gonna try to get as close to the edge as you can and you're just gonna sew that. All right, so what you are going to need if you do wanna hand sew up your hole is needle. And then what I'm gonna do is use some white nylon thread. So basically I'm gonna grab a decent amount of this thread. I'm gonna grab the, the end of the thread and stick it through the needle hole. And I'm gonna double up my thread. So I'm just gonna center the needle on the thread. And then at the end of the thread, I am going to double knot it. So once you do that, we are ready to hand sew. So what I'm gonna do is grab my first pad and the kind of stitch I'm doing is called a ladder stitch. So here's my hole. So what I'm gonna do when I start is I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go through the U-Haul and the fleece on the left side. And I'm gonna try to get as close to the seam as I can when I start. I'm just gonna pull that through. All right, and then the tail, I'm just gonna tuck inside. What I'm gonna do is take this side. I'm just going through the fleece now. I'm just gonna go through it like that. I'm not sure how to explain that. I'm gonna pull it through. Then I'm gonna go to the left side and do the same thing. And then pull it through. And then I'm gonna go to the right side. Take it like that and pull it through. And then I'm just gonna keep repeating this process until my hole is closed. And the smaller bits of fabric that you grab, the neater this stitch is going to look and also the stronger the stitch is going to be. So anyways, this is very repetitive as you can see. So I'm going to go ahead and speed through this part and then at the end I'll tell you how I end it. Now that I closed up my hole here, what I like to do is when I end is I will stick the needle like I would if I'm making another stitch, but then I will put my needle through the loop to make a knot. And then I'm going to take my needle again and go through that knot and in through the loop to make another knot. And then I'm gonna do it again just to make sure it's extra strong. After I triple knot it, what I'm gonna do is take my needle here, and I'm sorry if it's not focusing on the needle because it's so small. Anyways, I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna put it into the seam right there, really close to, as close to the knot as you can, and I'm going to stick it through the middle of the layers and I'm gonna to try to get it as far out as I can and I'm just gonna pull it through like this. And then as you can see, when you do that, it hides the knot. All right, so this is how it looks all sewn up. So now I'm gonna repeat the same process, but to the second one, I'm gonna close up this hole. So now I'm gonna speed through this one. Step. Now we are going to add the seams that go around it. All right, you guys, so for the seams, what I like to do is I like to add a seam that's one inch away from the edge. So one inch inseam all the way around. And then I like to add a two inch inseam. So a seam that's two inches away from the edge. So I'll go ahead and show you how I do that next. All right, so again, for this, all I'm doing is a straight stitch, just like I did when I sewed around the pad. I'm gonna start at the corner here here and then I'm just gonna sew all the way down all the way around until I get back to where I started and again I'm leaving a one inch inseam so you guys do not look at your needle look at your what you're following look at your inseam so I'm gonna go ahead and sew all the way around that As you guys can see, I sewed all the way around it. So now I'm gonna add another seam, doing the same thing, but instead of a one inch inseam, I'm gonna do a two inch inseam. And this is how the pad looks all finished. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this step, but I'm gonna do it to the second pad. So let's go and do that real quick. Okay. 
went ahead and finished both potty pads. So when you're done, they should look something like this. The next part of the tutorial, we are going to actually work on the tunnel. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, you guys. So for the actual tunnel part, what I like to do first is I like to work on the bottom of the tunnel. Here I have, I don't have the foam piece. I'm just working with the fleece and the cotton. As you can see, I drew my lines and those lines are the lines I am going to sew around. So what I like to do is on the longer side, I like to start in the middle. So I'll start here and then I'll sew all the way around until I get probably I'll stop about there because I want to leave a hole so make sure you do not sew all the way around it make sure you do leave a hole in it so I'm going to go ahead and do that so I'm going to start towards the lower middle and again you guys I'm just doing a straight stitch So I'm gonna stop probably about there. So again, I started right here and I'm gonna stop about there. So I'm not sewing all the way through it. So let's go ahead and do a back and forth stitch. Here's how it looks when you sew, but you know, you leave a hole. So what I'm gonna do next is trim around the edges. Take my scissors and just trim all the way around it. So I went ahead and trimmed all the way around it, as you can see. Next step is we're going to take our piece we just sewed and then we're gonna put our foam on top. And here's a hole right here. What we are gonna do is stick our hand in that hole and try to grab the furthest away corner. So like right here, and you wanna grab the foam with it. And you kinda of wanna to try to pull the foam through as you pull it right side out. Now this might be a little tricky, but with practice, you'll get it. So so it's gonna look like this when you shove the foam in. So what we're gonna do now is we already have one corner in the right spot. So what we're gonna do is fill for around for the corners. So the other corner is right here. So what I'm gonna do is try to shove it in the right spot into that corner right here. And I'm sorry if this is, this is kind of hard to explain. So basically I'm just trying to put the corners where they need to go. So now what I'm doing is feeling around for the bottom corner. You might have to sh like just struggle with this for a minute. So it's starting to look something like it should. So it's still kind of messed up. So the trick here is all you're gonna do is just shake it. When you shake it, it, what happens is it just perfectly flattens out and it fits your casing. What I'm doing is when you do shake it, you wanna make sure you have some room at the edges because when we sew, we don't wanna sew through the foam because that's hard to do. You wanna make sure that both sides of your casing are even on both sides. They have the same amount of spacing. So this is how it looks when once you get it in the casing. So for our next step, we do have this hole here. So you might have guessed it. I do like to hand sew up the holes. So we are gonna go ahead and do the same thing like we did with the potty pads. I'm just going to do a ladder stitch to close up this hole. To save time, I'm not gonna go and record this part again because it's kind of repetitive. So if you guys wanna see how I closed up the hole again, just just go ahead and rewind back towards the beginning when I was working on the potty pants. And then basically it's going to be the same exact thing, but for this hole. So let me go do that real quick. This is how it looks sewn up. For the next step, what we're going to do is add two straight lines on the side. So for this part, I'm going to leave an one inch inseam. Or I'm going to try to sew as close to the foam as I can, but you guys do not want to sew through the foam. This is just to keep your foam in place when you add the other seam. So let's go ahead and do that. This is how it looks. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to sew it again. So this is just again just to help keep your foam in place. Now we're going to do the same thing to the other side. So for the next step, we are going to add the seams, that the wavy seams that go across. So usually you like to add a few that go this way and then one that goes straight down. So that's the kind of stitch I'm going to use for the remaining stitches on the bottom piece. For the first seam, what I like to do is I go about three inches out and I will start the wavy stitch, leaving a three inch inseam from the edge. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side, add a three inch inseam from 
the edge here. And then I'm going to add another three inch inseam on this right here. I'm gonna turn it around. I'm gonna do it again, add another three inch inseam from that line. And then I'm gonna keep doing it until, I usually do six seams going this way. So let's go and do the first one real quick so you can see how I do that. So you see I added a wavy stitch there, which is three inches away. And I'm just gonna repeat that process, but to the other side now. So I got a seam here and a seam here. And I'm gonna add another one three inches away. So here's the seam. So I'm gonna add another seam three inches away right here. And the same thing to the other side. And I'm just gonna keep repeating that process until the seams look like they're all the way even, like an even distance away apart from each other, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so now I added all the seams across. So now what I'm gonna do is add a seam, a wavy stitch straight through the middle, all the way down. So I'm gonna do that real quick. I went ahead and added all the seams and cut all the loose threads on it. This is how it should look when you're done adding all the seams. All right, so the bottom part of your tunnel is finished. So now we are gonna work on the top part. So which now we have our, our top piece here. So I had my fleece and my cotton already <laughs> laid out to how I wanna sew it. So basically we're gonna kind of repeat the same process we did with the bottom piece. I'm going to start here in the lower middle region and then I'm gonna sew all the way around and I'm gonna make sure I leave a hole. I wanna make sure this hole is a little bit bigger because this is a bigger piece. Five to six inch. So let's go ahead and do that. So I did stop here. This is what down here is where I started. So here is how it looks when you sew all the way around it. All right, so now I am going to trim around the edges. All right, so this is how it looks when you cut all the way around it. So now we're gonna find our hole. My hole's right here, so just so you know where that is. And then what we're gonna do is lay our foam piece on top like this. We're gonna do just like we did with the bottom piece. <laughs> when we're doing it to the top piece, so we're gonna stick our hand in the hole and we're gonna grab the furthest away corner, which for me is this corner over here. So I'm trying to put the corner with the corner and then I'm grabbing it and I'm just going to try to pull everything right side out. So I got my foam in. So it's gonna look kind of a little bit of a mess. So again, I'm gonna stick my hand in and I already know this corner belongs there. I'm just gonna feel around and try to put the corners where they need to go. There's a corner right here, it goes over here. So I'm gonna feel down here, corner there. Okay, so once you kind of got it, like my corners are somewhat in the right place, then you can shake it. So let's shake it. So I like to grab each side and just shake. All right, so I went ahead and got it in. All right, so now I'm gonna make sure that the longer, the longer side, the edges, they have the same amount of fabric on each side. So I need to shake this one down more. I am going to hand sew up this hole and I'll be right back. Right, so I went ahead and hand sewed up the hole here. So now what I'm gonna do is sew a straight line all the way down here. And make sure when you do this that you do it on the long edge, the 24 inch edge. So I'm gonna sew a straight line down here and a straight line down here. And you do not wanna sew through the foam when you do this. You just want to try to get as close to the foam as you can. Basically, you probably have around a one inch inseam. I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. 
So I went ahead and sewed a straight line all the way down here and a straight line all the way down here. And again, this is just to keep your foam in place when you add the seams across. So now we're <laughs> gonna start adding the seams across. So I usually do six seams going this way and, and five seams going long ways. And again, I do this just so it's easier to fold when you get to that point. I'm gonna go ahead and start adding those seams. And again, I do the wavy stitch, which is this one here, and do it at 3.7, so 3.7. So that's the stitch I use for the rest of the seams on this top piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that. So I So I went ahead and added all the seams. So as you can see, there are six seams going this way, and then there are five seams going this way. And they each sort of measure three inches apart from each other. So for the next step, we are going to sew our top piece to our bottom piece right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I do that next. So to attach the bottom of your tunnel to the top of the tunnel, we are going to go and clip it. So when you do this, you want to make sure the outsides are going to be touching each other. And you also want to make sure you got the long sides lined up. You don't want to line the bottom up with the short side. So basically what we're going to do is attach the bottom piece to the top piece and you want to attach the edges together if that makes sense. What you do is add a clip here and then I'm just going to clip all the way down. So I went and clipped it and this is how it should look when you clip. So you see I kind of clipped the edge right here just to keep those together. And then what we're going to do is sew a straight line all the way down. And when you do this, you want to try not to go through the foam. What I'm going to do here again is just sew a straight line all the way down. And then I'm going to turn it over, flip it, and sew the same thing on the same side all the way down again just to make sure it's going to stay in place. So let's go ahead and do that. So I went ahead and I sewed a straight line all the way down. So now all I'm going to do is flip it over like this. And then I'm going to sew a straight line all the way down again. So I went ahead and sewed one side, as you can see. Take that clip off. So now we're going to do the other side. And I'm going to take this edge of my fabric or my tunnel. I'm going to attach these two, making sure the outside fabrics are going to be touching each other. And you want to attach these two sides together. What we're going to do is we're going to clip it just like we did the other side. All right, so this is how it looks all clipped. So what we're going to do is repeat the same thing. I'm going to sew a straight line all the way down. And then I'm gonna turn it over and then sew a straight line all the way down again. Went and sewed one side, so now I'm just gonna turn it over like this. And then I'm gonna sew a straight line on the same side. Here's how your tunnel should look when you sew both sides. It's gonna be kind of loppy. All right, so the next step, what we are going to do is turn it right side out. So I'm just gonna take the other end and I'm just gonna start Pulling it right side out. This part should be easy because the hole is big. So now your tunnel is going to look like that. So I turned it right side out. So now um, to keep it stable, I fold the edges back. So the seams on the edges should allow you to do an easy fold. All right, and then after you fold the edges, your tunnel is complete. So here's an overlook of the tunnel. I 
also don't forget your removable potty pads that is my foam tunnel sewing tutorial i hope you guys enjoyed and if you guys are interested in purchasing this tunnel i will have it in my etsy shop hopefully it's still there by the time i post this video if not there will be other foam tunnels like this if this video helped you in making a tunnel in any sort of way make sure you give this video a like and if you guys do want to see more tutorials from me make sure you subscribe to my channel and also you guys make sure you comment down below let me know what tutorial you want to see next and again you guys everything i used in this video is going to be linked down below in the description and if you guys do have any questions also comment down below let me know and i want to thank you guys so so much for watching and i will see you guys in my next video all right bye